Hi. How are you? Hello, hello. Why can't I hear you? Oh, sorry, sorry, here I am. <laughs> it's okay. How are you, girl? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. So for everybody that is watching, I'm Nicole Concilio. I am a beauty and lifestyle content creator, and this is Harouche. Hello, my little friends. <laughs> She's an amazing celebrity makeup artist and makeup artist just in general. I am like dying to have her beat this face one day. <laughs> you know, I got you. We need to do a YouTube video. Yeah, like a little glam sesh. And I'll uh, turn you out, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, are you ready for the questions? Yes, I'm a little scared, but... <laughs> I'm a little scared, too. <laughs> you look beautiful. Thank you. So do you. She got the turtleneck on. I'm welcoming yeah, yeah. summer, all things spring, <laughs> so... No. I love it. Float up. All right. Are you ready so to I hit me with the questions? Ooh, okay. So, on average, how long does it take you to get ready to go out? Do you want to answer first? No, you can go first. Okay. I would say, like, if I'm doing just, like, a quick little glam, I could get ready in, like, 35 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think if I'm – you know, the funny thing is, I feel like anytime I'm in a rush, don't you feel like you look prettier? Yes. When you're yes, doing it comes out so much versus- better. It comes out so much better because you're not overthinking. You're not like sitting there trying to like nitpick at everything. So the fastest I've ever gotten ready, like I'm talking full glam glam to a party, yeah. 13 minutes. 13 wow. minutes. And I, it's like a talent of mine and everyone knows like how fast I can like beat my face. And um, I actually posted a YouTube video like timing myself. And oh showing God, people to how to do it. it. But, you know, if like you're chilling, it's a vibe and you're like getting ready, you're pre-partying an hour and a half, max yeah, two hours. Yeah. I'm getting my hair done. Like it's like more of a vibe. Right. You're sitting down, you're chilling with the person, you know, you're having a moment versus you're rushing to get ready. But yeah. I always think anytime I rush to get ready, I look better. What do you think? I honestly agree with that. Like like you were saying, you're not overthinking it. You're kind of just like going with the flow. Yeah. And I feel like the best glam moments I've had on my clients, it's always when we don't have time. Yeah, which I'm sure happens so often for you. Yes, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll Should move we on to one? the next question. Do you want to read this one? Sure. If you could only use one beauty product for the rest of your life, what would it be, Nicole Contiglio? <laughs> I would say probably brows. Like, honestly, I feel, if I have my brows done, I feel like, okay, I'm at least ready for the world. For me, it's always about the brows because I have such sparseness. But yeah. what about you? Okay, so I know everyone knows answers with brows or like <laughs> mascara or something like that. Yeah. But I'm Armenian girl. I got, I feel like I deserve these brows because I got bullied yeah. so heavily for it when I was younger because I used to have a unibrow that came down to here. So all I have to oh do my is God, like, I didn't know like, that. Yeah, my brows like came down to here. It was like no joke. They used to call me McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> like You're literally so horrible. I know kids are like horrible, horrible. But I actually have it in here. I'm gonna show it to you. Ooh, I'm excited for a little Harush item. So <clears throat> the reason why I always say lip balm because my lips are giant and I just cannot deal if like my lips literally are dry. And yeah. so 
when I was creating the Morphe box, I went through all the stuff that they have. And this is a lip balm, but it's a ointment. And not Ooh. only can you like use it on your lips as a chapstick, but literally as like a highlight. I love that tip. And a if you have scabs and <laughs> anything else, like there you go, you got like a little glow. So it's like a multi-purpose super balm. So if you have dry skin, you can put it on it. If you have eczema, you can put it on it. And you got dry lips, you you could put it on it. Like it's just like I don't know. I've always said in it's any interview, I've ever done go with this chapstick or a lip balm or a lip conditioner but since i found this all-purpose ointment like it's like my holy grail i'm obsessed with it have you Ooh, ever I'm tried it? Have to try it no i've never tried it it's so good and it's vegan too Ooh, i love mm -hmm. that shall we move on to the next question yeah Ooh, I'm gonna take a dare for this one. Who is one yeah. person you would never collab with? <laughs> I'm gonna take a dare. I feel like both of us are not messy, so. Yeah. You know, be kind. Oh Ooh. gosh, okay, so I have Nicole, to draw. Nicole, eye on your hand in 30 seconds using eyeliner only. Okay, okay, here we go. Are they gonna time me? Well, 30 seconds, should I? Here, I'll put the timer on my phone. Oh my God, this is hard. Oh, they are. Oh yeah, they are. Go girl, timing. I believe in you, you're good at the wing. Wing it out, wing it out, let's go, let's go. Go Nicole, go Nicole. <laughs> I'm making me anxious. I love it, thanks for making me out. You know, from Legally Blonde, Ben and Snap. Ben <laughs> <laughs> Am I doing it? I'm like, you are. To it. Three, two, one. Here she is. Up. Actually, I'm pretty impressed at how fast you did that in 30 seconds. <laughs> Thanks, You're quite girl. Awesome, my dear. It's <laughs> <laughs> abstract. It is abstract, <laughs> for sure. Yes. Ooh, show us a hidden talent, Harush. I have to take off my nail rings for this. Oh. You guys are gonna trip out. So I thought everyone could do this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh my God. <gasps> that was pretty impressive. I can't do that. I like dislocate my jaw and I can stick it, but look at how long my nails are. That hurt a little bit. Oh my God, yeah. But without nails, I can like fully. Oh my God, stick. girl, that's a talent. I know, but I always thought everyone could do it. So like when people, I would ask like my friends, like when I was little, I'd be like, oh, like walking around my hand. <laughs> thinking it's completely normal until my mom one day was like, don't ever do that in front of me. <laughs> but I yeah, that's like, mom. I have many hidden talents, but that was just like one I could just show you right now. Yeah, I love that. I love it. All right. What is the most important tip for securing a successful brand deal? What do you think it is? Um, for me, I always feel like being authentic and your true self is like the most important thing. And if a brand doesn't want to work with you because of, you, you know, how you are, I kind of feel like, okay, well then that's not the brand to work with. But I always feel like being authentic, making sure you love the product and being yourself is the most important thing. I 100% agree with you. Um, one thing that I've learned, and I think I've, I, I have been a professional celebrity makeup artist for so long that like the whole brand deal thing was very like new to me at a certain point. Mm -hmm. And 
It's okay. I always say this to everyone. It's okay to walk away from brand deals and knowing your worth. Um, yeah. That's number one. And I feel like sometimes certain brands will like pin people against one another. Like this person is okay with taking this much for a brand deal and this and that. And I don't think that's like mentally okay for the influencers. And um, I definitely believe that if you do a brand deal up to six to eight months, you should be trying out that brand before you start speaking about promoting the brand because mm-hmm. you don't know the long-term effect, if it broke you out, so on and so forth. And I think it has been the greatest turnaround when you do try out a product for that long because you actually know how to present it correctly. And sometimes, you know how like brands claim like this product, this, this, and that, and this, and that. Yeah. But when you use the product for a long time, sometimes, like recently I used this one product, it faded my stretch marks and it doesn't claim that in what the product does. And I think that if you can actually test out the product for them and give them claims that the product does not have on their website or what they promote it with, I think the brand becomes extremely happy with you because they realize how genuine you're being and you're actually trying the product. And anything you put forward, please believe in it. Don't like put out just yes. anything anyone gives you. So like know your worth, number one, and know it's okay to walk away from certain deals if you don't feel comfortable, if you know the brand doesn't work. Yeah, I completely agree. That is honestly such great tips. Even me, I'm like, oh yeah, know your worth. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I completely agree. Next question. (laughs) Ooh, what is one piece of advice you'd give to those who hope to break into the world of beauty and entertainment? Uh, Harush, you want to go first? Sure. So a lot of people don't know this about me, but I never was signed to an agency, nor did I have a manager before I started working with celebrities. I always think social media is one of the biggest, biggest outlets for you to put out your work. And no matter the likes you're getting, no matter the engagement you're getting, you just never know who's watching. So just don't ever be discouraged. Keep posting the content. And I know some people like on YouTube, like that have done series for years and They didn't get that many views, but they didn't get discouraged. They kept authentic to themselves instead of trying to bend to the trend and try to do what's trending on YouTube. And within like two or three years, your time will always come if you stay consistent and work really, really hard. So don't ever try to bend to a trend. Stay authentic to who you are because there's only one of you. And you just have to have a work ethic like no other and can't complain you got to be grateful and you just got to keep pushing no excuses put out content nonstop, and don't change your content because you notice people not liking it or this and that because you never know within six to one year whatever you were authentic doing will become a trend because don't forget trends go like this yes that is honestly so true i'm gonna echo a little bit of that for sure like i kind of feel the same exact way kind of being authentic to yourself showing your personality showing your goofy side if you have one Mm -hmm. and even showing like your mistakes you know there's been times in youtube videos where i've like sneezed and got mascara all over my face so you know showing that you're a real person being consistent trying not to get too wrapped around the numbers like harush was saying i know a lot of up and coming artists and and i even catch myself sometimes being like oh my gosh why didn't this get a lot of likes am i doing something wrong but at the end of the day if you're posting content that you're loving and that you're happy with that's all that really matters and to be consistent for sure yeah Don't let the masses dictate who you are. 
For sure. And I think all of us, all of us like fell into that at one point. Oh, yeah. What is the worst trend you've ever tried? Ooh. (laughs) For me, it definitely was uh clown contouring back in the day and like a lot of a lot of concealer and a lot of color correcting you know when i first started makeup i had no idea anything about my skin type like what products i should use if i have dry skin so i would like bake and powder and powder and powder and my skin would always look so bad and it's because i have dry skin so i would definitely say like for me, it was like excess amount of concealer and color correcting. What about you? Yeah. I think the worst um, makeup trend I've ever tried, it wasn't a trend. It like, Mm -hmm. it was never, it was just when Instagram first started. And I remember these like Makeup Forever, these like two color pods and um, contour wasn't like a thing thing yet. And it said highlight and contour, but it was like this orange color. And I thought that was like a contour color. So I was contouring my face with something that should have been a bronzer. And I think (laughs) till this day, a lot of people don't know the difference between like a contour color needs to be like grayish, more bone-like to depict bone bone structure. And I was literally just like contouring my nose with like bright orange and like, you know, all down here was um, NC15 MAC powder instead of baking, like packed on. Um, And then it was orange contour. So, I mean, it was cute for the moment, but yeah, (laughs) would I ever do it? It was probably a lot better than (laughs) uh, like my first time ever experimenting with makeup. If you have a photo, you should totally post it. Oh my God. Oh my god. So actually I do have a photo still posted if you like scroll down into my old stuff like in 2014. It's in the I think it's like <laughs> <laughs> and I have like red lipstick on and it's just like orange stripes. It's <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I own it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, should we do next question? All right, here we go. What is your dating life like? Is it more difficult because you are well known? Do you want to go first? Mm. (laughs) Why don't you go first? Okay. (laughs) So for me, Um, I'm dating Riley and he was my ski instructor. So that's how we met. And he was kind of like a little ski bum mountain man. So he had no idea who I was or anything about me. So it was kind of like easy for me. You know, I, I didn't feel like I had to put on a persona or anything like that or worry really about my finances or anything. Um, because that's not what he was about or what he really, you know, he wasn't like a typical LA guy or anything like that. Mm, um, we all know so that. I really got lucky, but for you, what is it like? I'm gonna take a dare. Okay. I really just don't talk about it. <laughs> I feel you, girl. Ooh. Um, this is so easy. Easy. Hi, sisters. Welcome back to my channel. James Charles. <laughs> the easiest one to do. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That was an easy. Would you rather be able to wear makeup again or never be able? What? Okay, never be able to wear makeup again? Okay. So basically what the question is, uh, would you rather be able to do makeup for the rest of your life or your hair? Which one? Oh, God, makeup for me. I'm so bad at hair. Um, so you would rather do your makeup for the rest of your life? Yeah. 
then make so you're cool with like your hair looking crazy and then just having a full face of makeup on yeah because then i can yeah. at least put it in a bun you know what i'm saying yeah i feel like what about my you? hair for me oh really because i'm such a skincare freak that uh -huh. like like I rarely put this much makeup on like only for YouTube or if I'm going out my regular life yeah. I do not have makeup on it's like only my serums mm -hmm. and my SPFs that I put on and that's it and I, I do think honestly like that really 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 helps a lot with how your skin tends to age like if you lay off the makeup a little bit not too much every single day yeah, I agree. And even if you focus a little bit more on skincare, your makeup looks so much better. Mm -hmm. Looks smoother and brighter and prettier, blends better. And plus, I like, I don't know why I'm like one of those people. When I notice you look the same every single time, you, not that I'm fishing for compliments, but like people aren't like gagged at when you do show out one yeah, time. Like, yeah. Yeah. You look so good, you know, versus when you look the same, yeah, I feel like sure. you tend to like, oh, she looks the same. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like one of those people that yeah. like one day I can look like I'm walking down a runway and the next day I look completely homeless. And those oh are my, my God, two I moves. Feel the same way. Yeah. 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 I'm either a mess or completely put together. Nicole, who is your style icon? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Um style icon. Honestly, if it comes to fashion, I really 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 love the way that like Desi Perkins dresses. Like I feel like she dresses mm -hmm. so beautifully. And but if it comes to like makeup, I would honestly say like Harush, when I first started makeup, like your account was what I would watch all the time. And like, I remember oh, going no. to so many of your master classes in New York that you had. Oh, I remember there was one at the plaza. But yeah, I feel oh, like. Oh my God, with Charlie, I, you were there? Yeah, with Charlie. Yeah, I was Why there. Why did I not know this so now? Yeah. That's so cute. But what about for that you? That was like one of my first big classes and I was so nervous. We sold out the plaza and it was like that more was people awesome. than we expected. And it was so overwhelming, but felt so blessed. Like, I think that was a very big pinnacle moment in my career when I was like, oh, this is the power of social media. Yeah. Because I didn't understand social media before because I had clients and I was like, but I can't book. I don't have time to take clients. Why would I have social media? And when yeah. I started doing the classes because of social media, that's when I was like, wow, 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 that you can connect with this many people through like an account. And I didn't have that many followers at the time. So that's really cool. My yeah. style icon is share, share, share. <laughs> and I definitely have to say that like share and I know it's going to sound crazy, but Princess Diana, I'm just so obsessed with her. Oh, I'm obsessed her. with her life story. I've been obsessed with her since I was a little kid for some reason. I don't know why. And um, as I got older, when I started like reading things into her personal life, and I was like, she was a bad bee. Like, yeah. she really was. She was a trailblazer. And to go okay. against something power of that big and be by yourself and a woman especially at that time in like 97 mm -hmm. like wow bow down to you basically like yeah, you for real. you did a lot like not only for like humanitarian aid what she did like she was a fashion icon back then and how she held it together with that much going on in her personal life and how she loved her children and how she unselfishly gave herself to people in need when she was in need. And I feel like I identify to that personality type where I'm an overgiver, where I like to people yeah. please all the time when I've been at like the worst points in my life. 
where I don't have anything to give. And it's like, I will give even from an empty cup. And I feel like I identified with her in that standpoint. And just, she was a fashion icon. Cher was such a big icon. Cher is half Armenian. And Mm -hmm. like in my culture, we don't have that many like famous people to look up to. Um, Mm -hmm. So Cher was definitely one of them, like with her Bob Mackie dresses and the makeup, the Kevin Kahn, like that like moment, you know, studio times. And I think right now, um, a fashion icon of our time currently is Kim Kardashian. She is like, to me, the second Cher. And I feel like till the end of time, people are always going to remember her. She's going to be a Diana, a Cher. Yeah. Just, I agree. We are living in the time of her now. For sure. Next question. What is advice you have followed that you regret? What would you do differently? Hmm. Advice that I fall that I regret to be too perfect. Oh, that's a good um, one. I remember a lot of people around me, they would be like, don't post something unless it looks perfect. Um, no, like, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Like, it was just like, I was like, edit it more or like, this is just when Instagram started and I would post pictures of my clients and there was no like face tune back then and stuff like that. So there was so many glam moments I didn't post because I would like zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out and be like, no, the makeup doesn't look completely perfect. So I can't post it. And Mm -hmm. I wish I just like posted it all. Maybe my career would have escalated faster because I rarely posted things and sometimes you just in life don't overthink just do you rather look back in 50 years and say i made a mistake instead of what if yeah for i completely agree for me it would probably be like when i first started out there was a lot of people that were trying to change me you know like i'm very loud i'm italian i'm from New York and I have the accent and I curse and a lot of people tried to tell me to be differently and to act like this and kind of like almost like act like a lady in a way. And there was a few times where I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll be quiet. I'll, uh, I'll, I won't curse. I'll be, I'll simmer down. I won't be myself pretty much. And once I stopped listening to that and started being a bit more myself, wasn't trying to be someone I'm not, that's when I feel like things really took off for me on YouTube and Instagram. So I feel like just being your authentic self is the most important thing. I definitely agree with you. And I think that like the realer you keep a peep, like, Our followers are not, like, they are not dumb. And I feel like the realer you keep it, the more they can relate to you because Mm -hmm. nobody is perfect. There is no such thing in this world as perfection. And, like, the cursing thing, like, I have a sailor mouth, too, so I can definitely um, relate to you on that. And I think (laughs) that's what took me so long to jump on YouTube because it's, like, oh, I don't think people are going to like how I talk because I'm really blunt and not a lot of people could take that bluntness. Like I have the kindest heart. I have no ill intent. I'm just a blunt person. And some people can take that and she's being cocky. It's like, no, I'm just like really, really honest. And I have a monotone voice. So. All right, next question. Next question. What is your most embarrassing moment? Um, hmm, this is hard for me. I don't know if I've really, oh, I have a perfect one. So there was my first time ever doing a like live event. I think it may have been BeautyCon 
and we mm-hmm. had done like a walkthrough of like you know everybody walking out on stage whatever and so when it came time to me finally like walking on the stage with everyone i got so scared by these fetty cannon confetti cannons that they had and i wound up yeah. tripping falling and i like grazed my knee my phone went flying into the audience i like lost so much mm-hmm. stuff out of my bag like it was a really and so many people like you know had their phones out and re- recording it and it was like a viral kind of moment but i'm honestly always tripping and falling i'm very clumsy so it's kind of like my yeah. brand now <laughs> but what about I, you i definitely trip and fall a lot like more <laughs> than i care to admit yeah I've had a lot of embarrassing moments, like, but like, I'm one of those people that like laugh at myself. Yeah. Like, and I feel like I like that too. Like, I will be the first person to laugh at myself. Um, yeah, same. I think mine is like a falling story. I shot this thing um, where it was a skit for Fredericks of Hollywood, and it was actually a really big deal because the producer, it was all real actresses working with me. And I was the only influencer hired to actually work with actresses. And it's this like, it's not really a skit, but it was a big deal what we shot. Like they shut down like Hollywood Boulevard, the W Hotel to shoot it. Mm -hmm. So comes the premiere of it, it's at W Hotel and I'm wearing these big Louboutin heels and I'm walking down the stairs feeling myself, you know, like there's like people mm-hmm. and like, you know, they're taking photos just like how you said. And it's like the premiere of this thing and this like producer that won Emmys. Yeah. And I'm just like totally feeling myself walking down the stairs and I slip, I go backwards and my purse flew like double time in front of me. And I remember, and one of my friends was there and he was like, you just as you were falling you were screaming f word f word f word my bag and my bag fully opened the way it was and like i just remember items flying in front of me and i think a couple of the items hit me in the face while i was falling (sighs) so like people when i when i fell i actually ended up breaking my leg from this fall and oh my gosh. when I fell, people didn't know whether to like come to help me or just to stand there and stare and like laugh a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it was really <laughs> funny the way like I fell. And um, all I remember is like my close friend, I see him before he even comes up to me, he was like literally like a little mole rat, like gathering my stuff from my purse. Like he was crawling on the floor. And it took about maybe five to 10 minutes before someone actually came up to me because everyone was just so in shock. And yeah. I thought that was really embarrassing, like that I was just laying on the floor for that long. Yeah. I and feel I like, like that you and, I are like, you and I are like sisters in that. I feel like I'm so, um, I'm so clumsy. Yeah, same. I feel like I'm always in a la la land. So it's like, uh, I hit my hip, <laughs> I hit my foot, I hit my arm Like It's like, yeah, I'll just keep it moving. What is your biggest what? regret? Ooh, ooh, I'm gonna take a dare on this one. <laughs> okay, Miss Nicole, bring on a dare. Find, Find something new in your house and wear it on your head until the next dare. Ooh, okay. Right. I have this blue jacket. I have to wear it on my head. Put it on your head, girl. Make it fashion, though. <laughs> okay, make it fashion. Okay. <laughs> make it fashion. Make it fashion. Maybe like a little. Yeah, that looks cuter. A little moment like that. Yeah, that looks better. <laughs> <laughs> Until the next era. Here, I feel bad for you, so I'll take a dare on that one, too. Aww. I'm going to take Adara so she can take the thing off her head. <laughs> <laughs> Do your brows in 30 seconds with no mirror. Girl. She's like, I could do this you with my hands. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
need it. Here, I think I should do this. All right. But oh, there I he is. A clever moment. I love that. Because I was like, there's no point you. in doing it on my. That's lit, you guys. That's literally kind of what I do with my brows. Even on my YouTube videos, everyone's like, "You did the brows off camera." I'm like, "That's." You're like, all I have to do is fluff them up, girl. Hairspray. And brush up. <laughs> I love that. That's a great for tip. Mm -hmm. It seriously stays. What is your worst habit? Oh my gosh. For me, I like pick at my nails so much. Um, so like, it's like a nervous thing, like a nerve anxiety thing. I pick at my nails. I'm like trying to stop but it's so hard. Like, I don't even notice that I do it sometimes, you know? But what about you? I don't have any bad habits. I'll take a dare. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a dare. Let's make this fun. <laughs> Dare? Hmm. Okay, so you know what? I'm just gonna go and go ahead and say it. What is my worst habit? Um, I overthink things way too much. Um, and I think that I like to do a hundred things at one time, and I have serious like ADHD when it comes to that. And I burn yeah. myself out. So one thing that I would like to change about myself is understanding to concentrate on one thing at a time. But I think that's why I'm such a creative mind where I can do 10 things at a time. But since I have autoimmune um, disease, I think that it takes a toll on my health because it gives me a lot of anxiety, which I don't like to talk about it because it gets me like super sensitive when people talk about it. Yeah, that's I why I said fear. But I put on my big girl chonies on and I decided to say it. I said what I said. <laughs> well, I know that by opening up, you're definitely helping so many people out there that probably go through the same thing, you know? Yeah. And I know a lot of like the people that follow me on YouTube, like can relate to me because you can see how eclectic mm -hmm. I am where I like to do everything. And I'm one of those people that like, I rather just do it myself than get help for someone to yeah, help me because I have a vision of exactly what I want it to look like. Yeah. And I need to learn to accept help and to delegate responsibilities versus take on too much responsibility on my yeah, shoulders. For sure. What's your sign? I'm a cancer girl. Oh my God. I'm a cancer rising. So I feel like that's where we relate a lot. I'm a Libra rising cancer. Ooh, I love that. But I'm born on the darker side of the moon. And I don't know if you know the differences. So yeah, 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 yeah. There's I the lighter born side on the and the darker side, side, too. No, I'm not emotional. I'm moody. Oh, I feel um, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is, like, my mom's a cancer, and she's on the lighter side, and she's emotional. Mm -hmm. But with me, I'm like, yeah. <sighs> Like, and then I'm like, hee, 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 hee. like in two seconds, literally, like yeah. I might scare people. <laughs> like if you watch me for 24 hours, like things like I never hold a grudge. Like, yeah. I don't think I've ever held a grudge against anyone. I'm one of those people that like, I say it to your face. I have like a mood, ta mood tantrum and then I keep it moving and I will forget about what happened. Yeah, for sure. I love there that about you. There are some signs that are very, very spiteful. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Wait, we're at the um, end of our I will, 
we I want to do one. What's inside okay. your bag? Show me your clothes. Ooh, okay. So I have it right here. And there's not like anything really amazing in here. I have sanitizer. I have a wipe if I need to take off my lipstick before a mask. I have my wallet. Oh, that's <laughs> small. So uh, that's a uh, small. That's smart. You have wipes with you just to take off lipstick before you put on a mask. Yeah, yeah. And then I have obviously my mask, and I have like a little chapsticky thing. That's all. Yeah, girl. Where's I, your I don't money? Really Show me your money. <laughs> It's no, open here. your purse and show me the purse. I want to see inside of it. <laughs> I want to see if you She's dirty or clean, so girl. <laughs> She's clean. She is clean. That says a lot about a purse. <laughs> I always say that. If you like open someone's purse and look at it, it says a lot about a person. Oh my God, it really does. Mm hmm. Well, girl, I had the best time. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Of course. Thank you, VidCon, for having both of us and for yes. these funny questions. They were interesting. And we learned something new about each other. Well, I learned something new yeah. about you. That you came to the plaza. I'm going to tell Carly. She's going to be, why did you never tell me this? I don't know. I thought I did. But now I'm like, I, I don't think I did. No, I have a photo with so you guys, cool. too. You had your orange hair. Oh my God. Then. You texted it to me. I had, yeah, I would, the yeah. short red. It was yes. actually red. And then every time I would wash it, it would fade. And then it got to this orange color. And I was like, yo, I rock with this color. Diet orange. Next it time, not red. so good on you. I've been thinking about actually, since I've been get, I got my hair back healthy from blonde, I've been thinking yeah. about going back to my color. Oh my God. It, you looked so good with that. Thank you, baby. I want that of picture course. because that is so cool. See, see you guys where social media takes you. She came yeah. to a class years ago. That was in 2015, 2016. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So just never stop. Share everything that you do. Don't be afraid. Don't listen to, don't listen to haters, but listen to, um, I would say like, Constructive criticism. Constructive criticism. Yeah. And be nice to everyone because you never know. Like, especially yeah. with, I think, in the YouTube community and just like being an influencer or TikTok, like, don't you feel yeah. like one day your content could be relevant, another day my content could be relevant, and then it goes in waves? But you just got to keep oh, it, you got to stand your ground and be authentic to who you are. And don't bend over backwards to please an audience. Be yourself. You'll find your authentic audience. And the audience that comes to you that, like, is inauthentic because you followed a trend, those are the people that are going to unfollow you and definitely mm -hmm. not going to be giving you any um, – why is that word slipping my mind? Um, conversion. Like, they're not going to oh, be conversion. commenting, yeah. liking your stuff. They're just there to, like, be nosy bo peeps, you know? Yeah. So it tries <laughs> Nosy to both yeah. Girl, All you right. are I the love best. You so much. Love you. <laughs> I love you so and much I'll more that you supported you. me at that time. <laughs> of course, always. I love you, girl. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you, VideoCon, for having us on VidCon. Thank you, VidCon. Bye.